Okay. Hi, Danielle Salzman, Salzy at the Movies. Hi. How did you uh, first come? Oops, uh, that was for Sophie. <laughs> <laughs> what was the genesis for the screenplay? So it was an idea I had a few years ago where I um, just pictured the first scene of Nancy waiting in her hotel room, having taken this huge step of booking this young sex worker to come uh, and help her. And she's waiting for him to arrive and she's sort of sort of excited and nervous and amazed that she's actually done this, uh, but terrified that it's actually about to happen. And then there's a knock at the door and there he is. And so that was an idea and, an, and a, just to just, a scene that I kept playing in my head for quite a long time. And then in January, 2020, I thought, if you want to know what happens in this story, then you're going to have to sit down and write it. <laughs> so that's what I did. I just put aside a week. It wasn't a briefed piece or commissioned. No one knew about it. And I just wrote through a draft, just get them, get them talking, get the story happening, see what happens, see how they develop as characters, how it all works out. And, and then <clears throat> I really wasn't sure what to do about it. So I just put it away for a bit. It was a bit on the short side. It was a slightly odd length. And I wasn't sure about the ending, but I felt there was something there. Um, but I got another job and I was working and I was busy. And I, again, I just didn't know what to do with it. So it was really when I was put in touch with Debbie Gray, the producer who was looking for something that would, they could make that would satisfy the COVID protocols in the UK. So I said, well, I've got this thing. that's two people in a hotel room. And she loved it uh, very pretty much straight away and I felt very encouraged by that and she encouraged me to then send it to Emma because I had written it with Emma in mind although I didn't dare to dream that she would actually ever say yes but I sent it to her and she came back very quickly and very positively too and then after that it was all happening quite quickly so it was all kind of tumbling out and after that we did another sort of 10 or 11 drafts <laughs> but uh, but that first chunk of time um, all just sort of was a, was was all happening quite quickly. And with writing it uh, with Emma in mind, do you find it easier to write a script with actors in mind, even well before they know there's a script out there? I actually don't mind either way. I've done both. And I think if you really are, for, if the person you're writing for very much inspires you and Emma, the way she delivers a comedy line, that dry English way she has of doing it, but then she can turn suddenly to very moving drama and then straight back to comedy again. And I found that very inspiring, just her hearing her voice, the way she would do it. And it was making me laugh writing lines that she would say, thinking, I know, you know, that's just going to be funny when she says that. Um, <clears throat> so it's very easy if, if there's a, if the person is perfect and you just start off with that and then you just let that voice develop in your own head. But I think trying to sort of force it, if someone's made a suggestion, I've had this before in the past, you know, people are specifically looking for a vehicle for somebody in particular and they suggest a person. And <clears throat> that is a little bit more difficult. And so in that case, I'd rather to sort of let a character uh, develop organically and then cast it in the normal way once you see who might be the best fit for that character but in this particular instance Emma's voice was so strong in my head it it became an absolute joy and weirdly easy to just keep Nancy's lines tumbling out so how did you react when you first found out that Emma said yes oh I just I was out with the dog and I just abruptly stopped walking <laughs> I just you know I had a buzz in my pocket that was an email from Emma you know I sent it to her and I thought you know I know she'll get to this she's a really nice woman she's very encouraging and supportive and I know she'll read it at some point if she's got time but you know who knows when I'll hear from her it might be a few weeks it might you know she's probably very busy so I wasn't really expecting but so I sent it off and then um Pretty much the next morning, oh yeah, I was out with the dog and I looked down and there it was an email from Emma just very, very like <clears throat> enthusiastically saying, yes, let's do this. Like, this is great. I wanted, there's something here. I want to do this. And yeah, I just stopped walking and just stared at it and then read it another four or five times and then kind of had to walk it off. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it felt like a moment, not only that I would actually get to hear Emma say the lines that I'd written, and I was actually just genuine, even as a viewer, looking forward to that. But also, you know, you think uh, someone with Emma's immense and deserved power in the industry, I thought this might actually get made now. 
Um, and so it was all those realizations coming together at once. Did you do any uh, particular research uh, while you were writing the script? Um, the first draft was calling on things that I <coughs> had read and taken an interest in, in terms of Leo Grand's character, who's a sex worker. I had always been interested in sex workers, particularly in countries where it's completely legal, like Germany or the Netherlands, that have a kind of vocational aspect to what they're doing, people who set up clinics or practices to help people who can't access their sexual desires in a way that's more straightforward for other people. So I had, I had seen and watched and sought out things about that because that's something I found interesting. Um, and so I sort of wrote a lot of the first draft from that sort of things I'd seen in that way. Uh, but it was after Sophie Hyde, the director, came on board that we started to work with um, sex workers as consultants and um, who would read the script and talk to us, talk to Daryl and talk to Sophie and gave me notes on the script and just would sort of say this would never happen or you know things like that I mean we just didn't although Leo and Nancy are very specific individual characters they're not trying to represent a whole movement or campaign or act, be an activist it, it seemed to us just silly to and insulting to just make a gratuitous mistake because we hadn't bothered to check with anyone so I was very glad of those um, those notes what do you hope people take away from watching the film? I would like people to take away what I always take away from the, my favorite films and the films that I'm inspired by, which is a sense of being excited about the possibility for your own life and a sort of invincible feeling, a, a sense of sort of fizz inside that if you take the reins of your life, then you can really make anything happen and you could be excited about the possibilities for your own life. That's what I remember leaving the cinema as a teenager or whatever feeling <clears throat> those are the films that stick in my head that just made me think that made me feel positive and excited about what might come next all right thank you so much thank you